It's been a good year to be a PlayStation fan, after starting off the generation with very few must-play exclusive games on the horizon, with Sony pumping out underwhelming schlock like the Order 1886 to tide players over. Over the course of 2017, the company has confidently unveiled every last surprise they've been working on since launching back in 2013. It took them a while to get there, but between incredible blockbuster sequels such as Uncharted 4 and a bucket load of amazing titles to look forward to including a rebooted God of War, Spider-Man and Days Gone, Sony have a solid roadmap of releases to see them through to the end of the console cycle. Before we get ahead of ourselves and start looking at the years to come though, it's worth taking stock of the past 12 months and the wealth of quality games Sony have released, just to see where they stack up against one another. Long awaited sequels, fan favourite remakes and new instant classic franchises have all hit shelves over 2017 exclusively for the PS4. Alright, some of them came to PC too, but you know, whatever. But only one can be crowned the winner of Sony's most successful year of the generation so far. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best PS4 games of 2017. Number 10, Knack 2. The sequel pretty much nobody wanted or asked for, Knack 2 flew under the radar when it hit shelves earlier this year, and despite being a marked improvement over the maligned original, once again didn't strike a chord with gamers. It was probably never going to though, as the action adventure title is aimed at a much younger audience than the rest of PlayStation's exclusive library. With that in mind, it's nice to see Sony pursuing this style of game, even when something more akin to Horizon would probably net them a much higher profit margin. Likewise, as a casual experience, Knack 2 is surprisingly pretty good, and you can bet the next generation of PlayStation fans will have fond memories of growing up playing stellar releases just like it. Action platformers such as Knack have long since been in vogue, and let's face it, Mr. Knack is hardly a Crash Bandicoot, but that doesn't stop this enjoyable sequel from being a solid game in its own right. Number 9, Gran Turismo Sport. The long in development sort of sequel sought a spin off to Gran Turismo 6. Polyphony Digital's first outing on the PS4 wasn't the smash hit success that Sony was probably expecting. Don't get me wrong, from a technical perspective, Gran Turismo Sport is an unparalleled powerhouse, but the problem is that there isn't enough content packed under the hood to make it a true challenger to other racing games out there, even ones in PlayStation's own stable. Geared towards multiplayer rather than featuring any true substantial single player options, while the driving is exhilarating as ever, with such a gap between releases the developers needed to exceed expectations rather than simply match them. Sadly, the release of Sport has made one thing perfectly clear. Neither Sony nor Polyphony can rest on their laurels and bank on the GT name to shift millions of copies anymore. The devs have become complacent, and while the past few games are by no means bad, they've been disappointing enough to allow the series to be overtaken by more innovative competitors. Number 8. Yakuza 0 Over a decade old and with six games under their belt, the Yakuza series found a new audience in 2017 thanks to the release of the X excellent prequel game, Zero, for PlayStation 4. Already out in Japan, the latest title from Sega finally released in the West at the start of the year, riding a wave of renewed interest in Japanese action games and capitalising on the sequel's refined gameplay. Despite telling a ridiculously violent and dark gangster story though, the prequel, just like all Yakuza games, balances this dour mood with a good dose of wacky comedy that serves to separate Sega's series from similar games in the genre. Whether coming from the characters themselves or the wide array of activities players can get up to in the title's varied open world, this inconsistent tone actually makes for a charmingly unique story at the heart of the game that's difficult to not lose yourself in. The prequel doesn't do anything the series hasn't done in the past, sure, but damn if Yakuza 0 isn't one of the most surprising hidden gems of the year. Number 7. Uncharted The Lost Legacy While players always knew Uncharted 4 was going to be the end of Nathan Drake's story, there was hope that the announced DLC for the game would expand on beloved side characters such as Sully, Sam or Elena one last time before they were gone for good. Consequently, when Naughty Dog revealed the stars of the standalone expansion, The Lost Legacy, were going to be Chloe and Nadine, characters fans neither hated nor loved, players were pretty disappointed. They shouldn't have been, however, as The Lost Legacy, despite being a shorter experience, turned out to be just as good as any of the prior fully-fledged games, boasting both larger combat areas for players to get lost in as well as tighter, linear set pieces. The expansion was just as big, if not bigger in scale, than Uncharted 4. However, it was the personal story of the two heroines which really elevated the material to another level. While fans didn't know much about the characters going into the spin-off, they sure did by the time the credits rolled, and their engaging relationship proved that the Uncharted franchise doesn't need Nathan Drake at the helm to still be a success. Number 6. Neo Comparisons between Neo and Dark Souls were inevitable. Long before anyone even got their hands on the game itself, the similarly demanding combat, open world exploration and difficulty all evoked from Software's iconic series. But to write off Team Ninja's hack and slash action game as a mere imitation would be underselling it entirely. Because while the similarities are there, Neo has its own priorities when it comes to how it uses these familiar systems. The combat in the title is much more complex and rewarding, leaning on the developer's long history of creating spectacle fighting games 
their champion combos and quick reflexes. Although it's not as fast as Ninja Gaiden, it's not as slow as Dark Souls either, hitting the sweet spot somewhere in the middle. Juggling different attack styles, weapon types and enemy weaknesses, there's a depth to the combat that can be overwhelming. But once you get the hang of it, it transforms Neo into one of the most satisfying and expansive action games of the generation so far. Number 5. Hellblade – Senua's Sacrifice Ok ok, let's get this out of the way first. From a pure gameplay perspective, Hellblade is… underwhelming. With the entire 8 hour experience being split up between solving the same puzzles or fighting the same enemies, the indie title relies far too heavily on repeated mechanics. Thankfully though, Hellblade doesn't need amazing gameplay to still be a great experience. Focusing on the titular Senua's descent into madness, it's the presentation, characters and world that act as the narrative driven game's most memorable takeaways. The central performance from video editor turned actress Melina Jurgens in particular is outstanding and carries this emotionally draining experience once the puzzle solving loses its luster. Exploring metaphorical and highly interpretive environments while Senua battles her on psychosis, expertly brought to life by the game's superb and downright terrifying use of 3D sound, Hellblade plays out almost like the most surreal Darren Aronofsky or David Lynch film brought to life in video game form. Ninja Theory's daring indie release is everything the medium should strive to be, and although its gameplay does admittedly sag in its final hours, those drawbacks don't detract too much from an otherwise exceptional gaming experience. Number 4. Crash Bandicoot – N-Sane Trilogy Although there's a lot of stigma surrounding remasters and remakes, when they're done right, they can make an amazing, iconic title relevant again for a modern audience who may only just be discovering it for the first time. Great examples of this are admittedly few and far between, but thanks to Sony and Activision, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy can be added to that short list. Lumping in the first three Naughty Dog releases into one entirely remade package, despite being built from the ground up, developers of Vicarious Visions have been able to capture the feel and flow of the originals to a T. Of course though, not everything was to the like of longtime fans. Not least our own resident gaming editor Scott Tilford who would, if he could, destroy every copy of the game in existence. But while things like a bolder colour palette and maybe some quirks from the original being left untouched would have been appreciated, these minor niggles don't detract too much from an otherwise excellent remaster. Over 20 years later, the Crash game still plays good as your nostalgia laden memory remembers them, and Insane Trilogy is one of the best games of the year, on Sony's system or otherwise. Number 3. Persona 5 after four games that slowly transformed the Persona series into an underground success, the fifth game in the franchise finally broke the weird and wonderful RPG into the mainstream. Boasting over 100 hours of gameplay, the ridiculously gigantic sequel isn't lacking in things to do. Unfortunately, its interplay of intense dungeon crawling combat and high school drama justifies its long runtime. Although all games in the series so far have balanced dramatic social encounters with high stakes combat, the developers nailed the balance between the two jarringly different playstyles better than ever in this sequel. Consequently, the lengthy experience flows with a great sense of pace and urgency that rarely results in the players getting tired or pursuing one thread for too long. Arguably one of the greatest role playing games of all time, Persona 5 has been described as a masterpiece by critics and will hopefully inspire a whole new wave of daring releases just like it. Number 2. Horizon Zero Dawn Spending years making pretty good killzone titles, the developers at Guerrilla Games finally hit the big time with their ambitious open world action game, Horizon Zero Dawn. Taking place long after the fall of humanity and focusing on lead character Aloy's journey from outcast to mythical warrior by way of shooting as many robot dinosaurs in the head as possible, Horizon featured one of the most interesting stories of the year. Still, it was this shooting robot dinosaurs in the head thing that made the game an instant hit with players, as the AI fueling these dynamic enemies resulted in each new combat encounter of being unique and unpredictable. Likewise, the arsenal the developers gave players to not only blow away these aggressive foes, but also manipulate and entrap them, was a cut above your regular set of action game weapons, and radically changed the flow of combat depending on your loadout. Every part of Horizon, from its story to its gameplay, was a well-oiled machine in its own right, resulting in arguably the best first party exclusive of the PS4's life cycle so far. Number 1. Nier Automata Nier Automata is not a game you can really sell in a couple hundred words. While that's the marketing department's worst nightmare though, it sort of works in the RPG's favour, as the reasons as to why the open world action game is so good slowly reveal themselves throughout the second playthrough. Unfortunately though, that means for the first few hours at least, the sequel doesn't seem to be anything special. The different sections of its limited sandbox lack personality, the side quests are a little rote, and the combat itself, while retaining the spectacle platinum games are known for, doesn't seem to have the depth necessary to sustain in a 40 hour experience. Once the game opens up though, all of these initial drawbacks become the title's greatest strengths. The contemplative and poignant story at the heart of the sequel informs all of these gameplay decisions, with the immediately bland world slowly gaining personality entirely because of how sterile it is, while the combat itself eventually comes to reflect the developer's comments on violence in a way that's still tactile enough to be fun. 
It's something that, unfortunately, unless you've played it, it's hard to properly grasp, but there's no doubt that Automata will go down as one of the best games of the generation so far. So that's my list. Let me know in the comments which PS4 games you enjoyed the most this year, and feel free to berate me for not putting Persona 5 at number one. While you're there, make sure to head back to whatculture.com for even more lists like this every single day. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I've been Josh, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.